Now, the more important thing I wanted to let you guys know about is we have expanded and enhanced a new bail program. So you guys may have seen in the past um, that bail was only something that we gave to people for hag charges. Um, however, we have decided through uh, a few different incidences that have happened that it's time to try something new. No longer do we want to send people up to prison, have them serve out their full sentence, and then go to an appeal to try and get back at least some of what they lost if they really believe that they are being wrongfully charged. Instead, we are going to allow for this new enhanced uh, bail guideline to allow for people to start the appeal process in the cells. Now, this is probably not going to happen that often because essentially when someone is committing to this, they are uh, saying that they were going to commit to harshened bail conditions, which will be given to them, and they will have to commit to them until their appeal is heard, but they will not be sent up to prison. This is basically uh, something for people who truly believe that they're innocent, who truly believe that they can fight the charges and they want to see it on the docket. This is a program for them. Um, so if you could all uh, please open it up. Uh, I'd like to go through some of these sections just to kind of give you a brief rundown of how this is going to look for you as a police officer. To start off with, the only people that are eligible for this are people that are being arrested for at least a felony. Misdemeanors do not count. If it's, even if it's 20 misdemeanors, it still doesn't matter. They can either bench trial or go through the regular process as before. Uh, if they've committed a heinous act, um, they're going to go through the heinous act guideline process, which is very similar to this. However, instead of being released on the spot, they get sent up to prison, their their bail conditions get posted on the docket, and then they're released. In, in Bro, she days. wrote all of this shit. That's um, crazy. They uh, must try to get a lawyer or make a good effort to obtain one before they're eligible for this as well. And they also have to have money in their account. So we will do a bank balance check, or you will do it on our behalf when they're applying for bail. If they're negative a million dollars in debt, uh, someone else has to pay their bail for them. Uh, you have to have the money in the account, or someone else will pay it for you. The way this is going to work, essentially, if someone is in your cells and they request for an appeal... Oh, they, they can't go negative. ...two hours to post this on the docket. Yeah, I heard that. If they fail to do so, an indefinite warrant will be put out for their arrest. So let's go through the actual process. Um, it's going to be very simple. You're going to go through the, uh, the same channel that you use to go for bench trials. Uh, mm -hmm. You're just going to do this. You're going to request a bail request to the judges or the justices. We will review the request. Um, make sure in your in your message you include everything that is outlined in the content section. So the name, their state ID, bank balance, the refs report, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. At that point, a judge is just going to review it. They'll determine the bail amount. They will notify you, the officer, and then you can inform the arrested person and their lawyer, nice. and they can choose to accept or decline that bail amount on the spot. Uh, additionally, if they can't afford it, they can find someone who would pay the bail for them. However, that person must be awake and available to pay it at the time. Essentially, the bail must be received before they can be let out. Um, no delayed bail uh, payments. Uh, next up, it's going to be done via a bill. So essentially, whoever is going to be paying the bail is just going to be billed the amount. Um, if the person violates their bail conditions, then what they have charged for their bail will not be refunded to them. And like I mentioned earlier, if they do not post the appeal on the docket within 72 hours of their bail being granted, a warrant for their arrest will be issued and it will remain active until the statute of limitations expires. They also will not receive a refund of the bail the amount that they were charged. Now, if they do go through their appeal and it does make its way to the docket, whether it is uh, whether they're found guilty or, or not guilty, their bail amount will be refunded to them at, at the end of the trial. Uh, in section four, we just kind of go through some of the typical bail conditions. Uh, essentially, anyone that requests bail will be given these conditions. Um, they are required to comply with these, and if they violate these conditions, the assigned officer to the case um, or the judge overseeing it uh, will be the ones responsible for violating their bail and then uh, going from there. Uh, if they do violate their bail, essentially they are uh, to be remanded back into custody and they are to, uh, to serve out the remaining time. Um, but this kind of depends on uh, the nature of the charges, and uh, that's kind of why it's up to the judicial discretion of the, of the judge that's overseeing the particular case. Um, so with all that said, do you guys have any questions about anything that we discussed? Most for sure, I want to say it's a very good legislation push. Good, uh, nice one. Thank you. What's up, Vinjay? Uh, I had a couple questions. I read it, uh, before the meeting earlier. Um, mm -hmm. uh, just clarifying for myself, I forget exactly where it said it, but if, um, when they break bail, it said that they got a warrant, right? For the remainder of the, within the statute of limitations? Yes, that's correct. Is that the... Damn! Is it the statute of limitations from the crime they committed or from when they from broke when, bail? From when the, the charges are pressed. So let's say that someone was put on bail, the charges are pressed five days ago, they break their bail conditions. 
um, if you have them in custody, I mean, you could just push the charges right there, right? But if they're not in custody, like say they're running away and they break their 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 terms, the warrant will last for 25 days. Oh, okay. Nice. I have, a, I, I, have a, I have an additional question onto the second one I had. What does conditions okay. mean? You just said it. I'm a little conditions? lost. Conditions? Yeah. Well, I I might have said conditions, but I'm very tired, so I might have. Yeah, okay. I think you meant conditions. Okay, thank you for clarifying that one. My third question: um, the so the warrant that was is going to be put out if they are broken bail is it simply just for um the time for the fines that they were being charged for or is there a breach of bail charge that's... uh there's not a, a violation of a bail charge at the moment they will just be what they were initially charged for um and also will have their bail amounts not returned to them D does okay. that go into our, our, our funds like or yes. like it's split, it will be split it'll, it, the same be as just a regular bill it'll be split the same okay but it would like for instance if we we you know if they you know posted bail for uh in our county down here in the city uh, it will go to our funds or yes okay yes so you I'm guys just... get 25 percent of the bail the other 75 percent goes to the doj yeah well, my, oh. my last thing sorry i have a few things but um mm -hmm. in the let's say you are negotiating with somebody with bail whatever it's accepted uh when they're billed the bail amount are they billed are they billed for um the fine that they would get and just not get sent to the jail and then if they're found not guilty they'd be refunded or might boom in a bit anything is it having to do with the charges time or fine oh. and that's all dealt with after the fact I'm, I'm sorry i don't understand your question like like you'll say uh, denzel is being arrested for whatever mm -hmm. felony um he's accepted bail we bill him bail and we build we, we bill him the bail amount mm -hmm. is he just let off obviously no time because he's not gonna be serving time and no that's fine. correct he will walk out the front door um any illegal items are not to be returned to him anything that's potentially under investigation is not to be returned um but yes they are to have their uh their possessions returned that are legal and that they can possess and they let out the front door on under bail conditions. Okay, so the time, Sweet. the time, and the fine for the charges are would be dealt with in court. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. So the, essentially, this is a coming about because we've seen the, quite a few times where, for example, last night there was a mistrial situation where they wanted to fight the charges, but their lawyers fucked them over, and essentially they had to be sent up to prison, regardless of the fact that they were in good effort trying to contest the charges that they they thought they could fight. Um, it's, this is for situations like that, where people genuinely believe they have a chance to fight it. Uh, being on bail is not nice. It's not fun. You can be searched at any time at the discretion of the judge overseeing your case. There's a lot more, uh, restrictions in place. You can't have a weapons, weapon on you at all. Even if you have a weapons license, you can't drink, you can't do drugs. I mean, there's, there's so many more things that restrict you. That's the only people that would actually be doing this are people who are really committed to the process. And if they abuse it, they will not be able to be granted bail in the future. And and I believe if, if they don't post it in, in the seventy two hours uh, on the docket, it is an automatic failure. Bail. Yes, it's an automatic failure, yeah. and they will not be eligible to to enter this program again. Uh, you had a question. Uh, yeah, just a quick question. Um, mm -hmm. What do we do if a justice is unavailable and they're requesting bail? I uh, there's pretty much always a justice available. Um, we pretty much see every request that you guys ever get. Uh, I don't think usually when, uh, you guys request bench trials and no one replies, it's not because there's no one around to see it. It's because there's no one around that can dedicate the time to do it. Mm. So pr pretty much at all times, anytime you guys request a, a, a judge, we should be able to handle it. Not a problem. Well, would you be able to, uh, give well, us like can, a, uh, oh. we could probably put together a fallback. I might just write in like, uh, if there's no judges available. Um, the, they'll be granted the bail, which is like twice what their fine is. I don't know. I'll figure it out. I'll, I'll put in a, a fail save just in case that ever were to happen. I don't expect it to, oh. but I can understand your point. So can, can, can we use that same channel uh, for that re response from the justice then? So it won't take too much of their time, if that makes sense. I'm sorry for. Yes. The question. same channel that you guys use to request bench trials is yeah. the same place you will go to request bail. Okay. Understood. Any other questions? Which kind of bubble? Bubble. Oh, there's two. Uh, Loki. Okay. Uh, if. Somebody uh, is in debt. Are they ineligible for bail? If they're what? Sorry, in debt. If they're in debt. Yeah. Someone has to pay the bail for them. Someone with a positive bank account. So, so if if they're a million dollars in debt, someone that is not in debt would have to pay the bail. So at at, at that point, we'll give them a phone to contact someone to pay their bill. Their bill. Uh, you yes, you would. I mean, you wouldn't have to give them a phone, but you could ask them if there's. You could help them find someone to pay for them. Yes. Okay. You don't have to give them a phone. Understood. Officer uh, Vic, I believe. 
Hey, hi there, Vic Hanna. Uh, I have a question uh, about Section 1 uh, charges pressed. Uh, mm -hmm. If an individual is charged with any heinous act, where is the heinous act located in the legislation? Heinous acts are located in due process and jurisprudence is the legislation section you can find them in. Uh, the heinous act guidelines details of what would happen if someone were to be charged with one of these. Essentially, you will send them up to prison, and you have 12 hours to post this information. And yeah, like I said, it's only HUD charges. will be done by a justice or a judge, and then they will be placed on the docket, and then they're released on bail. Oh, it's defined into due processes, sees, and mm -hmm. the jurisprudence legislation. That's correct, yes. So it says bail is a privilege that can be granted any individual place. In a, if the individual is charged with any heinous act... Okay, so there's no, like, charges that are off-limit to bail conditions? Uh, they have to be at least charged with a felony to be eligible for this enhanced bail. So it's basically so HUD charges. HUD charges are, like, the heinous ones. ...at the senior buns and then says, are they still eligible for bail even though they just shot yes. up a stab? All right. Correct, yes. Their bail probably would be set at, like, a yes, million dollars or something, though. Because remember, the yeah, bail guidelines yeah, are set like by the... The judge or the justice that's overseeing it so you know if i were to receive a case in front of me of you know a guy going on a mass murder rampage just shooting 30 people down at the senior buttons i'd probably set his bail at a million dollars and of course you would be getting that money in like escrow or holdings and nobody would touch it right but it, it would go them. into the pd account that does the billing and the uh the department of justice then it would be returned you can't spend the money N no, you cannot. Oh. Because if they show up to trial, they get their money back. Demon. Does anyone else have any questions? No, I don't think no? so. Okay. All right. So, again, just to, to wrap it up, uh, this program is basically in place for people that really want to fight their charges. If there's any abuse of the program, please communicate it to us. Um, there's guidelines and safety protections in place to prevent abuse, um, but we do understand that it is always possible for it to happen. So please just communicate openly with us, and we'll do what we can to uh, curb any uh, potential issues or loopholes that can be found in the program. If you guys notice any issues, again, just communicate it with us, and we can fix it in a timely manner. Um, but that is pretty much everything for me. I do recommend you guys read the, the uh, statute of limitations stuff just so you have a solid understanding of it. But that's, uh, that's about it. Okay. All right. Uh, Justice Angel, everyone. Justice Angel. Woo! Justice Angel. Okay, yeah. listen. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you, Justice Angel. I'm probably going to give you a call. I'm more of a hands-on individual with the, uh, the, the learning process. What? Like, what? Okay. What? Oh, oh, stop. okay. Oh, All right. Stop. Stop. Oh, 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 my okay. No, no, that's okay. That's not what I meant. Today, <laughs> Plus one for no, uh, no, 